Do you guys like my makeup today? I've never really done anything like this, but I'm really feeling it. Hi guys, my name is Chi Chi and today is actually going to be a very heartbreaking story. So stay tuned. who are new to my channel welcome and if you're not new to my channel welcome back today it's going to be a story about my experience being in a very abusive relationship where I was beaten raped and strangled and amongst those three is emotional and verbal abuse and this is my story <clears throat> so it all started back in 2017 and um, I won't give the name guys because it's not fair <laughs> um, so we started dating in 2017 hi guys like like it was all fun we were happy you know man New love, it's always exciting. And then let's see, it was uh, April when we met, and then going what comes after April, May, June, July. I'd say around August, September. That's when the bad things started to happen. So within the relationship, it was the first time being with someone who had a child. So. And because our, our relationship was so new, I didn't know, would he, hey, but does this person still kicking it with his baby mama? Are they still seeing each other or what's happening? Or how do you conduct yourself in a relationship or behave as wrong? Or how do you to Do you understand? So how it all started, I definitely remember this incident very well or this occasion or this event pretty, pretty well. So it was in the morning. He told me, hi, baby. I'm going shopping um, to buy my son a few things. I'm like, oh, okay, sure, okay. Um, what time will you be back? He's like, no, around two. It's just an in and out, grab a few things type of situation. I'm like, okay, cool, bye. He leaves. So around 1 p.m. to between 9 p.m. and 2 p.m., he calls me and he's like, so what would you like to eat? Then I tell him, mm, today I'm feeling like a young McDonald's. He's like, okay, cool. Um, I'll be there in like... 30, 45 minutes. Okay, cool. Hi. Na kwa yata maya, na kwa yata maya. Two ya shapa. Three ya shapa. Four ya shapa. Moto ha so fit. How? And even, I'm even texting my friend. I'm telling my friend that, um, what if he's still busy with his baby mama or, do you understand that little panic mode that you go into and your friend is just there for you, you know, calming you down in that type of situation. Then I'm telling her that, you know what, I'm bored. Let's go lunch. Let's go have lunch. <laughs> Let's go have lunch. Um, I live in the ghetto. I live in Soweto. So I told her that we can just go to Maponya News Cafe, have a little lunch and then come back. And then she told me that, you know what? I'm just sitting here with the baby. We're not really doing much. So yeah, I'm game. Okay, cool. I get ready. So as I'm getting ready, he walks in. That's like, well, past four to five. Well, how? Okay. As he walks in, he sees me getting ready. He's like, how? Where are you going? I'm like, nah, I'm going out with my friend. Do you understand? You've been gone for so long, literally the whole day. I just wanted to get some fresh air. So we're just gonna eat and then I'll be back. So it looks like he didn't like the idea. I sharp, cool. So I'm walking towards the door. He grabs my bag and pulls it away from my arm. How? Okay, what's wrong? No, you're not going anywhere. I'm like, ha. <laughs> This guy is tripping. I grab my bag. and I'm grabbing my bag, he walks towards the door. So at this point, he wants to lock me inside. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, how? Okay. Sorry, guys. I just got distracted. <laughs> so as he walks to, to the door, I'm walking towards the door. And I'm telling him to move. It's just late lunch, dinner, whatever. And then I'll be back. And then, guys, he slapped me so so hard like getting i fell on the couch okay this is this is my body i fell on the couch and then my feet followed me so like so one time and then i fell on the ground and then from that point in time i was in total shock 
I couldn't believe. I couldn't believe what was happening, guys. I got up and then he slapped me again. And then he told me that you are not going anywhere. I grabbed my phone. I tried to call my friend to tell her that, hey, bro, listen, this guy's being physical with me. He grabbed my phone away from me. Guys, and at that point in time, that's when I realized that shit just hit the fan. At that point in time, that's when it came to my mind that once he has started this violent behavior, it's not going to stop until him or I or we both do something about this. So time went on by and the incidents kept on happening. The violence didn't stop and things now gradually pick up because it will start with the slapping and then it's going to be the fists and then if I should put it that way because now we're at a point where he's starting to strangle me I remember the first time he strangled me I went out um we went out to a party it was me him his brother um and the cousin the cousin um she's a girl so we went out so on our way back home we're at the entrance of the venue right so we're already outside we're just waiting for him and the brother to come outside so we can just walk together to the car so we're standing there and there were these two drunk guys and they were exiting the venue as well so they were shouting there was this song like i think it was back in 2018 Charlotte, guys. I want to see you, Charlotte. He don't need you, Charlotte. I want to see you, Charlotte. I used to like those song, guys. <laughs> so, uh, we're standing outside. So, these two drunk guys, they walk out and they start calling us Charlotte. Now, they're shouting, hey, 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 bo Charlotte, bo Charlotte, and things like that. So, he heard everything and he saw everything. Okay, fine. I'm chilled. Nothing happened. We get home. Once we get home, he slaps me. He slaps me. Like, yo, guys. <laughs> So he's slapping me, kiss of slapping me, and he's asking me why are these men calling you Charlotte? Why, why are you now Charlotte? So then to Charlotte when we come to when we hit when we hang a pant, but fun but busy Charlotte. And guys, I give you, you know, the window. Okay, in the hood we have a window, and then on the window we have like badla. Ne? So literally my head was pressed against Butler ill and he was strangling me. I felt so helpless. I felt so powerless. It was hard, guys, because in that situation, you don't know what to do because this person has so much strength. And you need to realize that the minute you start fighting back, it's like umupamanda lomunglo takshaiga kulu. I understand, like, in that time, we are pagamel, so most pagamel, in that time, we are not cool, so we are shy, we are cool, and it's it's just a vicious cycle. I remember the next morning when I woke up. The first thing I remembered was like, shit, the man sleeping right next to me just strangled me a few hours ago, and I started to cry. And you need to realize that whenever someone gets physical and someone is violent. They will apologize and tell you that they didn't mean for it to happen. It was a mistake. They don't know what came over them and they'll never do it again. Like I said, guys, it's honestly a cycle. So moving right along. So guys, at this point in the relationships, things begin to escalate and then now he's starting to do all of this violence in in public you know in front of his friends in front of my friends it's something that he's not ashamed anymore because he starts to get violence the minute he he thinks that he's losing control of me of the relationship or control of of anything around us so he resorts to violence and Hope so cool, guys. I'm not gonna lie. It got to a point where one day he told me that if he would unintentionally like end my life, he would 
know what to do with the body. He'd take my cell phone, throw it in the south, take my body, throw it in the north. And from there on, whenever there were like incidences in there, you start to think, what's going to happen to my What's going to happen to my parent? Am I going to be all over social media? Are people going to be all over the place looking for me, looking for my body? It is scary. And people would ask, why are you still there? Because at this point, I told my friends and the people around me that should anything happen, you guys know we did it. And that wasn't the way to live. You're always on the edge. You're thinking that the minute I'm with this person that you love so much, you could literally lose your life in a split second. I'm so cool, guys. I'm so cool. I don't want to lie. This was a year later. But the abuse didn't stop. And it wasn't like an everyday thing, guys. It was like weeks. Someone's outside. Someone's hooting, guys. So I don't know who's outside. I'll be back. Uh, sorry about that guys um, Okay, so let's continue so moving on to the first time that I remember him um, Sexually assaulting me you can call it rape uh, I'm crying guys just kiss. And I don't want to ruin my makeup today Because I think my face looks really dope so okay so we got into an argument right so i was at, i was at his place and i told him that i actually don't want to have sex with him so at that point he thought that i was cheating that's why i didn't want to have sex with him so at the middle of the night he started undressing me and i told him no i told him i don't want this and i told him don't penetrate me this is my body I, i'm saying no stop so um he looked me like he looked me straight in the eyes <laughs> it was like it was like he wasn't feeling anything and he kept saying no I keep saying no. When he kept, he kept, he kept on thrusting and thrusting and going and and doing it and and I didn't know what to do. Guys, I need to fix my makeup. It was really hard because when I asked him the next day why he did what he did, he said he he wanted to feel if someone had been there, if someone had been with me, which to me didn't really make sense. And then it went on to happening again. So it happened two or three times. And the worst thing to happen to you is... For someone that you love, someone that you call your partner to do such to you. It's, 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 it's heartbreaking. It's, I don't even know how to explain the feeling, but you're not yourself anymore child i've been through a lot <laughs> i've been through a lot guys no jokes what i'd tell people if they ask me why don't you leave if you love someone and you see good in them you know that they have good personality traits it's like when someone does nine things right nine things right and they do one thing one thing wrong <laughs> do you understand and are you simply going to just cut them off because of that one wrong deed? That was the predicament I was facing. Am I just going to end everything? 
am I going to stop fighting for all I know, for, for the man I love, for the relationship that I'm in because of this one flaw? And you're at the point where you are trying, let's go to therapy, talk to someone in your family. I, I could be there with you i could hold your hand we could do this together you try it's your way of of fighting for what you love for fighting for what you believe is yours for for the love that you think you deserve and it's a matter of not giving up on the next person but at the end of the day there is so much that you can do there's so much that you can do because at the end of the day the next person needs to meet you halfway you can't do everything yourself and I felt so helpless because I sort of think that he's the victim and I'm making him do all these things. And I wasn't. It wasn't my fault until you find the strength to leave. And that is what I did. I found the strength to leave, guys. And it was a learning experience, even though I could have lost my life but i don't want anybody to be in that type of situation to find themselves loving a person that's only hurting them we can do better as women to stand up and fight for ourselves i did what i could i fought for myself i fought back i fought for the relationship but it ended and when it ended i was at peace Sorry about the background noise, guys. My niece is in the house. So, as I was saying, I, I, I'd hate for anybody to find themselves in that situation. And I'm, I'm glad I'm alive today to tell you my story. Because there are a lot of ladies, there are a lot of women, there are a lot of young women, especially out there, who didn't have the chance that I got today to, to, to tell my story. And if you, my dear sister... Oh, my dear brother, find yourself in this type of situation. There are many things that you're sitting there and you're thinking you could have done better. There's something that I could have done which you couldn't, you know, something that I you could have done that I didn't do, you know. But I have no regrets. I was very happy in the relationship. There were highs and lows, definitely lows. And, um... If you're, th if you're sitting there and you're thinking, oh my gosh, she's so pretty, she's so stupid, she should have left the first day, the truth is, I didn't. It's true. That's it. The truth is, I didn't. And I'm here today to tell you everything that happened to me. And um, I hope that we can do a lot to fight gender-based violence and to fight for our sisters and our brothers and yeah thank you guys for watching and um if you have a friend or a family member or a colleague or someone that you know is in the same situation try to help them if they accept the help it's a good thing if not you know that you did your part so don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel share the video with your friends and family drop me a comment in the um comment section down below and tell me your story if you've been through something similar and let's have a conversation and let's find a way to move forward and heal i'm in a much better place right now and i'm thankful for the strength that i found in myself and the strength that I found in God. So till next time guys. I love you guys. <laughs>